Ever since Kamado Joe came out with a 22 inch kettle, I've been dying to find out if Weber's 22 inch rotisserie kit will turn our Kettle Joe into a lean, mean rotisserie machine. Let's find out. Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue, and ever since the Kettle Joe came out, I've been getting asked questions. Does the slow roller from Kamado Joe Kettle Joe work on 22 inch Weber units? And people on the other side of the fence have been asking, do great accessories like the Weber rotisserie work on the Kettle Joe? So I asked my local barbecue store, could you confirm if this unit will fit on the Kettle Joe? And they said, I don't know but why don't you take one and let us know the answer. So I wanna send a big thank you to Barbecues Galore for donating this Weber rotisserie unit so we can answer this question together. So without further ado, let's get unboxing. If everything fits, we'll start a fire. I'll pull out our chicken and we'll get to trying what may be the first rotisserie chicken on the Kamado Joe Kettle Joe. Okay, so we've got our rotisserie spit, like the Jotisserie. Our tongs, clamping down our chicken. Power unit, very similar to the Jotisserie. Some instructions. All right, we've got everything out of the packaging and it looks pretty straightforward. So I think all I need to do to get to seeing if it will test fit in our Kettle Joe is attach this little bracket for our rotisserie motor and everything else looks pretty much the same as the Jotisserie. We just need to install a few locking clamps on these so we can lock them into position and we'll be ready to go. Let me get this together and we'll move over to our Kettle Joe and try a test fit. Well, good news right away. I took my slow roller out, just lifted the dome ever so slightly from the perfect closing position for the slow roller. And just like that, we have Weber's 22 inch rotisserie kit installed in our Kettle Joe and the fitment couldn't be better. Domes opening and closing easily. Everything looks as if it's sealing nicely around all the sides. So with that, I think I will go grab our bird, bring it out, we'll season it up, start a fire, and see if we can cook an amazing rotisserie chicken inside the Kettle Joe. All right, we've got our bird out and ready to season it up. Now I haven't done any of my normal tricks I love to do. If we can, uh, I love to salt, dry brine, everything. It just adds so much flavor. But since I wasn't even sure if this would fit, it's great. I didn't even have a chicken. So I just ran to my store, local grocery store, picked one up, came back. And so now we face a choice. Do we season our bird first and or do we start a fire first so that it's up to temperature and ready to go? I always like to choose the seasoning, even if it's just going to give it a little bit of time for that salt to start to do some of its work. I'm going to uh, season our bird and then I'm going to rely on our grill torch to make up for some lost time and get some heat going in our Kettle Joe quickly. So let me bring it nice and close. We'll season this up. We'll get the spit on as well as I'll show you these uh, prongs are a little bit different than what I'm used to where we'll slide the spit through this and clamp them down and we'll be good to go. Let's get our bird seasoned up. So first, I'm just gonna slide one of these through so it's in position and then screw down these clamps till it starts to hold it tight. I know I'm just out of frame here, but I'll go over to our Kettle Joe, just get a sense of where that's going to line up. That actually looks pretty good. So I think that'll be close to our bird being in about center. I'll just maybe move it a touch more. We can always, we can always adjust it once uh, we've got our bird on there, but I like to get pretty close to the pin. So let's season it up and then we'll install the second one. I'll take you fast forward for that. So just before we wash up, I'll also take an opportunity, grab a meter probe, install that before we go get nice and cleaned up and we'll be ready to fire up our Kettle Joe. Slide this in, I'm gonna go right for the rest and install it to the line. I'll set that for about 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, since we're doing poultry today, I've uh, picked Fogo Super Premium, stacked it all towards the back, which is how I like to run my rotisserie so we can move the heat signature around if need be. So let's grab our grill blazers grill gun, get our fire going and let our kettle joe with the rotisserie come up to temperature. <laughs> So just like that, about a minute elapsed time, we've got some nice white ashed over coals. So let's close our dome, open our top vent, and let our Kettle Joe come up to temperature. 
So the ideal temperature that I like to look for for any rotisserie bird is around 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I found uh, if we go much hotter than that, the outside of the bird looks amazing, but we run the risk of having a raw inside and that's not what we want, especially with a chicken. And so going around 300, 350 degrees is the perfect temperature as it helps cook the bird more evenly all the way throughout. And that's why I love using the meter probe. It's gonna let me know when we get close to being done. So we can open the dome, maybe rake those coals if need be, and let the flames fly so we can finish crisping up our skin. So I'll rejoin you in a couple minutes once our Kettle Joe is up to temperature and I'll show you the vent settings. I've never set it up with the Weber rotisserie before, so I don't know if that's going to alter our vent settings from what I would normally go with. I'll keep you posted. But before I uh, take off for a minute's break and just hang out by a fire, try and warm back up, it's a little cool here around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Today, it's a great opportunity to remind you for the month of November, I'm giving away a Kettle Joe, exactly like what you see here, a Kettle Joe with those Smokeware upgraded side shelves. Absolutely love those. Not only do they add more space, they look like a million bucks, especially on the Kettle Joe. And so as a thank you for crossing 50,000 subscribers, I'm giving away a Kettle Joe. All you need to do, subscribe and comment on any video that I release in the month of November, and that equals a ballot entry. Good luck to everyone who's already entered, and if you haven't, there's still plenty of time to get in on the action, and good luck to you. Make sure to check out my complete post for all contest dual, uh, rules and regulations, etc. Uh, that's a video a few weeks back if you haven't already seen it. I'll rejoin you once we're up to temperature. Okay, so we're up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So I've just started to adjust the bottom draft door down to a single finger's width. And for the time being, until this starts to stabilize a little bit more, I'm leaving the control tower top all the way open. So let's get our bird on since we're losing daylight quick. Just grab our spit and we'll slide it in. Looks good, let's turn it on, and I think we are set. That looks awesome. All right, so the meter has just let me know that our chicken is approaching near the end of its cook, but like all maiden voyages, we are learning a lot with this one as well. Now, I kind of forgot, I don't know why I know this, but with the Jotisserie on the Classic Joe and the Big Joe, it always runs a little bit hotter since we're getting more air. And I immediately went to my normal vent settings for 350 degrees, not even thinking about the fact that like the Jotisserie, I suspect this rotisserie unit will add more air. And so I let our fire get a little bit hotter than I want. Okay, fine, 100 degrees hotter than what we want. We've been running about 450 degrees the entire cook. And so, like I mentioned earlier, the outside of the bird actually looks really good, but we are going to check it on the inside using my Thermalworks uh, IR just to see if we are 100% fully cooked on the inside rather than poke the meter all around. This is handy a handy tool to have for doing spot checks to make sure we're completely safe. It looks great, but if we were to do this all over again and go back in time about 45 minutes, we go maybe a little bit less FOGO since there's still plenty of fuel left and it's running nice and hot and it's having a, a hard time controlling temperatures. And I would have adjusted my vents a little bit more aggressively from the get-go, remembering that rotisserie units allow a lot more air. I'll rejoin you in a couple minutes when it's time to take off the bird, let it rest a few minutes and slice into it and see, most important, how does it taste? Okay, so our bird looks amazing. It's uh, about fully done on the outside, but let's see how we're doing here deep down towards the rib cage. That's not bad, 157, so I'm happy with that. So I actually think we are fully cooked. I got away with it because we're a small bird today. Let me start to close down our vents and get this off so it can rest. All right, our chicken's off and resting, and I think somebody notices there's chicken around since Bella is very attentive all of a sudden. Well, hopefully it's as good as Bella thinks it's going to be because it smells amazing. We'll let that rest for about 10 minutes. I'll rejoin you for the taste test. All right, our bird has rested 10 minutes, and I can't wait to dig in because the aroma is coming off of this. Despite getting a little carried away with the heat, I think we are okay. Again, for next time, uh, absolutely a little bit less fuel, broke that rule, a little bit less air through our bottom vent, top vent, broke that rule, 
that's all part of the fun and experimenting and learning. So definitely have a couple notes for next time. And that's another reason too, uh, why I absolutely love using my meter. It saves these cooks. So you can go back in meter cloud and look at historical cooks, make some notes in terms of what went right, what went wrong. And remember that for next time. So the next time you're up doing, say maybe a rotisserie chicken on the Kamado Joe Kettle Joe using um, the Weber accessory, uh, unless there's any others that come out, that I think is the only one that fits right now. So you're able to get the full rotisserie experience on your Kettle Joe. You'll have those notes saved and know where you want to go. Anyways, enough chit chat. Let's slice this up and get in for our taste test. All right, I've got my piece picked out. This looks awesome. Let's see if it can stand up to those expectations. Let's break it down a little further here. Perfect. Go in for our taste test. Oh my gosh. Despite our learning curve here, this is an amazing chicken. In fact, there's nothing wrong with that. You wouldn't even know this wasn't salt brine. It's juicy, bursting with flavor, tender, cooked perfectly, smoke is on point. Again, fogo and poultry, a match made in heaven. They go really well. And our seasoning, I, I don't think I mentioned it, is Elaine's pre-made. One just complements chicken so well. So for all those little cheats and not having time, this still came out absolutely amazing. Well, I hope you like this one and learning to see at the same time as I'm learning if the Weber rotisserie unit is a good fit or not for the Kamado Joe Kettle Joe. I've fallen in love with rotisserie cooking over the last few years. And just like I like it on the Kamado Joe, if this is the only grill that you have, I'm gonna give this a smoke and dad two thumbs up. This accessory uh, adds a, just again, a whole new dimension of cooking on your grill and it is a lot of fun. Thank you to Barbecues Galore for donating, donating one uh, to me so that we could try that experiment and see if it worked. And just like uh, we do on our Kamado Joe, a uh, regular one with the Jotisserie, you wanna go ahead and knock that air down way less than what you're used to, just so you don't have what I have a little bit hotter temperatures today. If you enjoyed this video, please let YouTube know by smashing that thumbs up button and let me know by hitting subscribe to catch future videos, which will also help you in the month of uh, November, enter that contest to win your very own brand new Kamado Joe Kettle Joe with those upgraded smokeware shelves. Until next time, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid to fire it up. 